Welcome to the Lion's Den. My name is Robert Love. I'm a neuroscientist. I specialize in helping people prevent Alzheimer's disease with science. And I'm glad to be here with you. If you're just arriving, please put your first name and where you're from in the chat. Tonight, we are talking about my favorite pharmaceutical, aniracetam. Aniracetam is a pharmaceutical dr drug. It's not just a supplement. It is a pharmaceutical drug. And there's tons of great data showing that aniracetam can not only improve memory in healthy adults, it can also reduce um, symptoms of Alzheimer's disease and those with early stage Alzheimer's disease. Very, very exciting research out of Italy, believe it or not. And so if you're just arriving, please put your first name and where you're from in the chat. I'd love to say hello, and then we will get started. We got Sandy from St. Louis. We got Jeannie from Sacramento. Um, we got St. Pete, Florida. Hello there. I had a friend just visit there. We got Sophia from the Philippines. We got Jessica from Montana. We got France and Canada. We got France from Canada. That's interesting. New Brunswick, Canada. And Chrissy from Long Island. You can email me at uh, this name, Robert WB Love at gmail.com. If you want to hit the thumbs up, hit a like, that'll help drive up the algorithm and let people know that we're live and um, that it's a good show. This is fluoride free water with um, vitamin C, magnesium and some uh, Celtic sea salt. I have like three versions of myself I'm looking at. It's really dizzying. I got to turn one of these off here. All right, that's a little better. Okay, so questions about aniracetam. Aniracetam is a former pharmaceutical drug that is now in the public domain. And what that means is it's illegal to buy, it's legal to sell, it's legal to possess. It is illegal though to make claims about it and sell it. So I'm not making any claims about it. I'm simply telling you what the data show and I'm not selling it to you. I'm not able to sell it to you. So aniracetam in the research, by the way, I take aniracetam, oh, between two and three times a week now. I used to take it about five times a week. I took it, um, It's I, I really liked it when I would take my ADHD drugs. I, I'm prescribed Adderall for ADHD. It really brings down the Adderall and makes it a lot more manageable, less unpleasant. Um, who's taken Adderall? Who's noticed that it's rather, rather unpleasant to take? It's really jittery. It's like it's it's hardcore amphetamine. It's one of the most regulated pharmaceutical drugs available, and for good reason because it's really powerful and addictive. And um, I don't recommend giving it to children. Of course. Uh, by the way, medical disclaimer: I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. Please check with your medical doctor before doing anything that affects your health. My experience of being on Ritalin and Adderall. Um, since I was in third grade. So that's how was I old was I in third grade? 10. So over the last 30 years, I will tell you, these are very, very strong drugs. And I highly caution people from starting them uh, on children or as adults because they really have a big impact. There are other things you can do to improve your cognitive performance, improve your memory, um, and reduce the symptoms of ADHD. I would start with exercise good sleep and a good diet, reducing stress and learning how to manage your emotions and your stress levels. These are lifelong skills. Exercising every day is a lifelong habit you want to, you want to develop. Getting good sleep every day is a lifelong habit you want to develop. Eating good food is a lifelong habit you want to develop and learning how to manage your emotions, manage your stress is a, is a necessary skill for today if you want to be happy and successful. So I would work on those things way before I would start talking about drugs. Now, uh, there are some supplements and pharmaceuticals that can be helpful. And some people get benefit from taking stimulant medication. I would not start there. Um, if I were a parent, I would go to a medical doctor who would give my child a prescription, if they had ADHD, a prescription for exercise, hourly exercise. Every hour, I believe every child should be outside exercising, running around, even high schoolers. I think high schoolers every hour, every 90 minutes would benefit from a 10 minute break to go outside, stress their legs, uh, be in the presence of the sunshine, do 20 squats and come back inside. Performance will greatly improve. And sleep, there's great research um, on sleep. And what they found, uh, a town, I forget where it was, a town, I think this is in the book Nurture Shock. I think that's where, the, where I read this. Uh, and in this book, they moved the start time of school from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., so, they get, so the kids got two extra hours of sleep. Guess what happened? Number one, SAT scores went up 100 points. 100 points. That's a massive number. 100 points. Number two, car accidents decreased. So improving sleep improves performance on tests for school and reduces car accidents. And if you've ever been sleep deprived, you totally, totally understand this. Uh, sleep deprivation, not getting enough sleep reduces our mental performance and impairs our ability 
to drive cars safely and also make decisions. So some of these accidents by teenagers might simply be teenagers making stupid decisions, and it's much more likely they will make a stupid decision and be influenced by, let's say, um, you know, rambunctious peers if they do not have enough sleep. It's a lot easier to say no to peer pressure when you had a good night's sleep. So aniracetam. Fluoride-free water, by the way, I highly recommend. I use a Berkey filter. Um, aniracetam, spelled A-N-I-R-A-C-E-T-A-M, is a pharmaceutical drug that has been tested since the 1980s for, uh, with, for Alzheimer's disease. And there's a lot of really great research to show, number one, that it's very, very safe. No study that I found showed negative side effects of aniracetam that were significant. Nobody's dropped out of a study because of side effects. So it's very safe. Uh, no negative side effects uh, as far as what the people are saying and no negative side effects regarding liver enzymes or kidney function. You know, everything's functioning well. So it's very, very safe, well tolerated. Number two, it really improves memory. It really improves cognition and it does this in a number of ways. And it may even, I recently wrote a paper on this. It has not been published yet. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to get it published. It may reduce the accumulation of plaque in the brain. Basically, it helps process amyloid precursor protein, which is the precursor to amyloid, uh, beta amyloid plaque. It processes it, it helps process it in a healthy way. So we, we accumulate less plaque. And so um, I, I explained this in a paper and we'll see if it gets published. It, it will eventually, just I don't know when and where. So, so, uh, so anorastam, it may, we don't know yet, may reduce the accumulation of plaque in the brain. It likely increases BDNF, which stands for brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This is a growth factor that facilitates the growth of new memories uh, and, and new, new brain cells. And it also, um, it also goes up with exercise, also lion's mane. These things increase BDNF as well. BDNF is a very important growth factor or trophic factor for the brain. Anorastam also increases something called acetylcholine, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is what I call the master molecule of memory. It is a neurotransmitter involved in memory in the hippocampus. Very, very important. What sports did I play in college? I played lacrosse. How did you know, Nathaniel, that I played sports in college? Yes, love lines, Maine. Hi, Kiko. Okay. One soldier's mom. Robert, I'm on day three of your lines, Maine. Love it. Fantastic. Love to hear that. Do I avoid plastics when I can? So, so the dose of aniracetam. So, um, if, you're, if, if someone's taking ADHD drugs, please check, check with your doctor to see if aniracetam may be safe and appropriate to add in there. You might be able to cut the, the dosage of the ADHD drugs because aniracetam improves memory, improves focus and attention, and it doesn't have the negative side effects of amphetamine. I've taken the Ritalin, I've taken the Adderall, I've taken the Concerta, I've taken the um, Vyvanse. So I've tried those four, and I can tell you they all have very serious side effects. They affect sleep. They increase anxiety in the body. They're um, unpleasant in some ways. They're also highly addictive. They also reduce appetite. That's not good for children. So aniracetam could be safe. I, I don't know if it's safe for children. There's not good data on that. So you wanna talk with your medical doctor or pharmacist. It is safe for healthy adults. We do know that. Dosage. So um, I don't know what the right dosage is for children. If there's the right dosage for children, uh, the right dosage for adults is as low as 500 milligrams a day and as high as 1500 milligrams. I would start slow at 500 or 750 milligrams and then move up from there. Uh, 1500 milligrams is the max per day in any of these studies. I've taken that and that's a nice dose. Uh, you can also pair this. I definitely recommend pairing aniracetam with a B-complex vitamin. I if you're gonna take any nootropics, any smart drugs, any memory drugs, or any memory supplements, I highly recommend taking a B-complex pretty much every time because a B-complex vitamin provides precursors to help make certain neurotransmitters. B6 and B9 and B12 in particular are necessary to make certain neurotransmitters. So it's a really good idea to take a B-complex vitamin just to make sure your brain has enough of the raw materials uh, to make those neurotransmitters. So it's a really good idea to take a B-complex vitamin. Next, um, specific to aniracetam, alpha-GPC can be great to take. Alpha-GPC is a precursor to acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is the, it's the uh, neurotransmitter involved in memory or a neurotransmitter involved in memory. And alpha-GPC is a precursor to that neurotransmitter. So it basically provides the building blocks to make more of that neurotransmitter. Egg yolks are also rich in the same precursor, pre precursor called choline. 
according to research from the Journal of it Nutrition, approximately 90% of Americans do not get enough choline. Anybody else concerned about that? Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me a roar if you're concerned that 90%, nine out of 10 of you are not getting enough choline. Choline helps make acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is necessary for memory. It's a big problem. So eat, eat healthy sources of choline, egg yolks. Let me find some other ones for you. Foods rich in choline. Egg yolks, liver, red meat tend to be higher in saturated fat and choline can be found in food. 16 foods that are high in choline by Healthline. By the way, I love Healthline, one of my favorite resources. Foods rich in choline, eggs, organ meat. So liver, liver very healthy. Caviar, fish like salmon, tuna, cod, shiitake mushrooms. I love shiitake mushrooms. Another reason to eat shiitake mushrooms. Soybeans, I don't like soybeans. Soybeans are generally not good for humans. Beef. That can be good for humans if it's grass-fed. Chicken and turkey, definitely recommend pastured. Ooh, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts contain choline. That's great. And almonds. Okay, so my favorite foods on here that are really healthy for you are number one, eggs. Number two, liver. Number three, fatty fish like salmon. Shiitake mushrooms. Pastured chicken and cruciferous vegetables and almonds. All those are good sources of choline. So take a, take alpha GPC when taking anaracetam, that'll give your brain the building blocks to make more acetylcholine. And so th that, that's how I'd recommend taking it. Anaracetam, B complex vitamin, alpha GPC. That's a great, great thing to do. You can take lion's mane with it. You don't need to. Um, if, you, if it feels jittery, lion's mane can help bring that down. Um, if you want to have a, a more of a a high impact, let's say, let's say a more stimulating effect. You can take L tyrosine or take it with a cup of coffee or do both. That could be overstimulating for many people. So you might want to take L theanine or, um, or lion's mane with that. Okay. Questions about all of this. How do you eat your broccoli? Oh, I just had broccoli today. I slice. So first of all, I love the broccoli stem. Slice that up then. Make sure you get organic broccoli. You don't want to get all the pesticides and herbicides on conventional broccoli. So I, so I chop up the stem kind of thin, put that on a baking sheet with, with um, parchment paper, love parchment paper. So very, very helpful. And then I roast that in the oven at 400 with uh, lots of olive oil, salt and pepper. Delicious. And I roast it until done. I don't know how long it takes. How can I replace meat? Well, well, Valen Dango, D'Angelo, why are you replacing meat? Let's get clear. Is it ethical reasons? Is it monetary reasons or is it health reasons? That, that'll that allow me to help you replace the meat. So why are you doing it? I like when you write on board. You do? I don't know if I've ever done that. Kiko smile. Any tips for patients with schizophrenia and don't accept they have, an Ill, have the illness? No, schizophrenia is definitely not in my uh, field of expertise. Uh, I definitely recommend not taking psychedelics if you have schizophrenia, psych uh, psychedelics can be very uh, destabilizing for people who have schizophrenia. I really like this water. It's fluoride-free water with salt and um, vitamin C. It's really, really satisfying. Okay, so let's look up some aniracetam research. By the way, at uh, the Burning Man event I was at in Miami, Loveburn, I met an anesthesiologist who had no idea about aniracetam. And so I said, hey, let, like, first of all, like I told them about it. She said, wow, this sounds really cool. Let's, and I said, let's write a paper together about aniracetam and how it can help with anesthesia. So I wonder if chat GPT actually knows about aniracetam. It's been helpful with other things. Let's see if it's familiar with the data on aniracetam. Um, what is aniracetam? Is, can it help? Reduce memory loss. Reduce memory loss. Let's see if ChatGPT knows about this. <coughs> Love Lavender, how are you? <coughs> it's been a while. These supplements scared me off, though. If you look them up, the side effects are risky. Of aniracetam? I don't think so. I think aniracetam is great. The side effects are tiny, if any. What, what side effects are you reading? Laughter is the best medicine. 
Uh, spermidine is great. Spermidine basically increases autophagy, which is self-eating. So it kind of increases or mimics the benefits of fasting. I take spermidine. If you have severe migraines, I'd want to find out what the cause is. Francis Basque. So is it lack of water? Is it lack of salt? Is it lack of sleep? Is it poor nutrition? Is it stress? Okay, let's see what chat GPD says about aniracetam. Aniracetam is a nootropic compound that is part of the racetam family of drugs. It is believed to have cognitive enhancing effects and is commonly used to, to improve memory, focus, and mental clarity. Aniracetam is not approved by the FDA. Wow, that doesn't tell us much of anything. Um, does aniracetam help reduce memory loss after um, anesthesia. By the way, my mother recently had shoulder replacement surgery and she underwent both local anesthesia in her shoulder and general anesthesia. So day number two, I had her on aniracetam. I wanted her immediately taking things to help regain her memory after general anesthesia. A lot of people report that general anesthesia is um, uh, can cause memory loss. There's limited research on aniracetam specifically for reducing memory loss after anesthesia. Okay, so chat GPT is not familiar with the research, so I'm going to go to Google Scholar directly. So this is scholar.google.com, scholar.google.com, and this I can search uh, aniracetam and anesthesia. So there's an anesthetic called scopolamine, which helps block acetylcholine. And this this is this was frequently used in anesthesia, and there's uh, it's and scopolamine is often used in laboratory studies with mice and rats and memory loss, and so so that'll probably be what what we find here. So let's see, aniracetam, uh, memory loss, anesthesia. Ooh. This is cool. Aniracetam restores, re restores object recognition, basically memory, impaired by age, impaired by scopolamine, and impaired by, impaired by brain lesions. Oh my gosh. Alpha G, happy Rosie, Alpha GPC is not aniracetam. They are similar. They both work on acetylcholine, but they are different. I don't know what causes tinnitus. Uh, me and Durandus maker. Uh, for tinnitus, I, I really like hydrogen. That's a prescription drug you can ask your doctor about. Okay, so let me read this paper. Aniracetam basically improves memory. Those who lost memory due to age, those who lost memory due to anesthesia, and those who had brain lesions. Okay, so they showed these rats an object. Rats who were old did not remember the object as, um, did not remember the object. And rats who had scopolamine, which is this anesthesia, did not remember the object. Now, um, when they gave rats aniracetam or oxyracetam, which is a very similar uh, pharmaceutical drug, they did remember. <coughs> so in this study, aniracetam basically uh, reduces memory loss due to age and memory loss due to um, general anesthesia. So that's cool. Let's give it up for aniracetam. If you're interested in this study, it is in the Journal of Pharmacology and Pharmacology, Biochemistry and Behavior from 1996. Let's see what else we can find here. Aniracetam. Anesthesia. So I'm looking on Google Scholar here to see what else is with aniracetam and anesthesia. Do, here we go. 
this is about TBI, traumatic brain injury. A number of you um, have asked about traumatic brain injury, how to recover from that. Here is a good paper. Um, so delayed post-treatment with anorastam improves cognitive performance after traumatic brain injury in rats. Bingo, let's read this one. This is very exciting. Okay, so this is in the Journal of Neurotrauma. When is this from? 2006. So let me read this abstract here. So ide ideally, I can read the whole paper. I'm not gonna read that now. This is not gonna be interesting for you to watch. I'm just reading the abstract uh, so you can get the gist of it. So there are three experiments. So rats were, they, they, they gave rats a concussion basically is what they did. And then they gave them aniracetam for 15 days. Um, and they measured cognitive performance by having them walk, move around a water maze. So this is where rats have to swim. And then, um, you know, they can, I'm not from the Morris water maze. I forget which one that is, but basically rats are very smart and they can figure their way around this water maze. And if you hurt their brain, they perform it less slowly or excuse me, more slowly. So their maze performance is decreased. So that's a great way to remember to measure memory or measure cognitive impairment in, in, in rats. So this other one, so experiment one, they gave them a concussion and then gave them an aniracetam, had them do the water maze. Another one, they gave them a concussion. They waited 11 days and then gave them aniracetam for 15 days. The results of these experiments indicate that aniracetam is an effective treatment for cognitive impairment induced by traumatic brain injury, even when treatment is delayed for days following injury. So basically imagine someone gets a concussion. Imagine a human falls off their bike. You can either give them aniracetam right away, or you can give them aniracetam 11 days later. And then they gave them, imagine you give a human a memory test. Aniracetam improved memory both immediately after concussion and 11 days after concussion. So it can even help when the, with delayed recovery as well. Let's give it up for aniracetam. And again, if you want to read this study, this is called Delayed Post-Injury Treatment with Aniracetam Improves Cognitive Performance After Traumatic Brain Injury in Rats, published in 2026 in the Journal of Neurotrauma. So here we found that aniracetam both improves memory at, due to age, it improves memory uh, due to anesthesia, and it improves memory after concussion. Questions, how are we doing here? Laura, what can someone with late stage Alzheimer's do to reverse it, if anything? It, it depends, it depends on how far along that person is. And so I would say going on, I would say get the book, The End of Alzheimer's Program by Dr. Dale Bredesen and follow that protocol. Uh, going on the ketogenic diet, eating, um, eating MCT oil, that can get energy to the brain. That might be effective. I would say exercise, sleep, and then reduce stress is the most important thing. So if someone has late stage Alzheimer's, it's unlikely that they'll be able to recover all the way. You might be able to slow down or stop the progression. A lot of late stage Alzheimer's is poor behavior. You know, someone who has Alzheimer's, they've lost their memory. They've lost th their vision. They've lost their hearing. They don't know where they are. It's very disturbing. It's very scary. So if imagine every five minutes you forgot where you were and who the people are around you, it's very disturbing. So there's a reason people with Alzheimer's disease are, are difficult because they don't know where they are and they don't know who you are and they forget their, their wife, their, their husband, their children. And it's very, very scary. And so if you can improve that behavior by reducing stress and reducing anxiety, that's really, really helpful. So if I had, let's say if my parents had late stage Alzheimer's disease, I would first turn off the television. If I were gonna have anything on, it would be classical music. And I would create a very stress-free environment. That would be one, that would be to help reduce the stress because that might improve behavior. Uh, number two, I would give them lots of healthy fats so their brain, specifically MCT oil. This is the MCT oil that I like. I'm not sponsored by them. I like them. 
This is Nature's Way. This is MCT oil made from organic coconuts. And three, you want to aim for three tablespoons a day. Start slowly. Otherwise, you can get disaster pants. I've gotten disaster pants putting a bunch of this in my coffee and taking it throughout the day. Start slowly, half a tablespoon, move up to three tablespoons over the course of a day. This can help get energy directly to the brain. As we age, our brains are less able to use glucose as energy. And, um, and so as a result, we need more energy from fat to bring our brain back up to balance. And so MC2 oil can help us do that. So I would turn off the television. I would turn on classical music. I would get them lots of healthy fats. I would reduce the sugar and I'd really try to make them comfortable and reduce their stress. I'd also get them outside for several hours a day. I might just sit them outside in a chair and have them look at a pond. Being outside in the light, very, very helpful. Um, yeah, I'd have them outside. I tried to have them outside for three hours a day and I'd try to have them exercise. That's what I would do. And then we can talk about supplements. I don't know if supplements are going to be helpful at that stage. I just don't know. So that's what I would say, Laura. I hope that's helpful. Kenton, my grandpa had it for 10 years, but always had a great attitude. That's wonderful. I'm glad. He kissed your grandma goodnight. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, I'm going to skip to the bottom of the TikTok comments here and see what we got going on. And let me check on my YouTube folks. Vegan life. Is it the same as pyracetam? No, aniracetam is different than pyracetam. They're all in the racetam family. Um, but aniracetam is one of my favorites. Aniracetam is more powerful than pyracetam. Good question. Okay. Thank you, Kiko Smile. Where can I buy aniracetam? That's a great question, Ashley. So you can search buy aniracetam, United States or US. Um, if you want to know where I buy my aniracetam, I don't publicize that because there's so many people that would buy it that it would, they would run out and then I wouldn't be able to get it. But I do share that with my Patreon patrons. So if you'd like to become a Patreon patron for $3 a month, one, two, three, three dollars a month, you can uh, become a Patreon patron. Go to robertlove.net and then scroll all the way down and you will see uh, a link to become a Patreon patron. Or you can search. I actually had... In order to find the anorastam that I buy now, I actually searched over the course, I probably searched for three hours of the course of two or three weeks. I was, const I was constantly looking and checking links and so forth. It was difficult to find. So I don't share that publicly because it'll be gone and then I won't be happy about that. But that's how, so you can either find it on your own or, um, or you can become a Patreon patron. Either of those will help you get it. If you live in another country, I don't know where to get it. If you live in Europe, you may need a, a prescription in Europe. You're welcome, Miyazora. Glowing autistic, autism ADHD. What is your question? You just have two nouns there, autism ADHD question mark. If you can give me a full sentence, I can give you a much more uh, in-depth answer. Glowing autistic. Francello, does the brain grow neurons anywhere else besides the hippocampus? Great question so the adult brain specifically this is the question is this this is a, a lot of debate in neuroscience can the adult brain grow new brain cells where what's the mechanism is this important so the research is in yes adults can grow new brain cells even into their 90s where are those new brain cells as you mentioned they are mostly in the hippocampus the memory center of the brain this is good because if you want to grow new new memories you can grow new brain cells there and research from dr elizabeth gould at princeton found that not only can adults mammal, mammals grow new brain cells in the hippocampus but the growth of those new brain cells is associated with improved memory so growing new brain cells is associated with new memory so thank you dr elizabeth gould when she first published her papers in science and in nature there was a lot of pressure on her because people said you can't grow new brain cells. Who heard in school you can never grow new brain cells, right? When I was uh, in school in the late in high school in the late '90s, I, I was told you can never grow new brain cells. Well, that ain't true. So where else can you grow them? We don't know. You may be able to grow new brain cells in the olfactory bulb, specifically women. And here's where this comes from. Excuse me. What they found was rats. They found rats can grow new brain cells in two areas of the brain, the hippocampus and the olfactory bulb, which measures smell, olfaction, specifically female rats. Now, why? Well, female rats um, can get pregnant. And if, you've, if you have ever been pregnant or have known, some, known someone who's gotten pregnant, you may have noticed that their tastes change. Now, why is that? Well, 
part of the theory is that the mother is trying to filter out things that could be toxic for the baby or toxic for her system and then therefore become toxic to the baby. So her smell is actually changing. So her smell is becoming flexible as she's pregnant. And so this might might be a time when she can actually grow new brain cells uh, in the olfactory bulb that's involved in smell. And so when uh, female rats are pregnant, that's when they can that's when they actually grow new new brain cells in the olfactory bulb. Now, does that work in humans? We don't know. But I thought that was very interesting that that would be a mechanism for growing new brain cells or neurogenesis, which is the genesis, the growth of new neurons, is pregnancy. Isn't that cool? My husband has TBI from the military. I'm very sorry to hear that one soldier's mom. Um, so depending, so anorastam could be helpful for recovering memory from traumatic brain injury. Check with your medical doctor. Uh, but that could be that could be really helpful. Where are you purchasing your Anorastam? OG Rustin, I think I just answered that. Love Lander, Love Lavender. I remember reading that Anorastam can trigger migraines and vertigo. Let me see. I haven't read that anywhere, and I've done a fair amount of Anorastam research. Can Anorastam? We just look up side effects of Anorastam. I haven't seen any negative side effects of Anorastam. People ask me, what's the side effect of anorastam? I say awesomeness. I actually I actually do say that. It's awesome. Uh, anorastam reduces stress and anxiety. I like to take when I go out, like when I socialize. I'm just, I'm just a really nice person. I mean, I try to be a nice person in general. And sometimes socializing can be a little bit stressful. Or whatever reason, I had stress during the day. And I don't want to bring that out with me when I socialize with some friends. Anoracetam increases energy, improves positive mood, reduces stress, reduces anxiety, reduces depression. Bam, that's a winner for a good night out. And it's not it's not intoxicating. So it's not like you know having a drink of alcohol can have a similar effect, but there's negative consequences to that. And it's not not to mention it's more difficult to drive, brain doesn't work as well. Um, I don't think as clearly, and I like to have my mind pretty sharp when I socialize because I want to have important, meaningful conversations with friends. So anoracetam, to my knowledge, does not have these negative side effects. Let me look. Side effects of anoracetam. Wow. So this is from Healthline. Side effects include jitteriness and irritability, insomnia, headaches, nausea, and vomiting. I have never heard of anyone vomiting. Nausea, potentially, if you take it on. Oh, by the way, if you take anoracetam, take it with some fat. That increases the absorption of it. Anoracetam is best absorbed with fat. So it could result in nausea if you take it on an empty stomach. Headaches, insom insomnia, yeah, don't take it late at night. So imagine it's like two cups of coffee. So definitely take it in the morning or early afternoon. Irritability and jitteriness, I think, are from like the stimulant effect of it. So love, love lavender, it looks like it can have an effect of headaches. It does reduce depression, and anxiety, can help with dementia. Ooh, here's a great little, I love Healthline. Who uses Healthline? Healthline.com, great resource, love it. There's this great section called Anoracetam versus Adderall, which is what a lot of people are asking. A lot of people with ADHD, myself included, were asking, hey, can I take this with Adderall? Can I take it instead of Adderall? I started taking them together. And I needed a lot less Adderall. That was really, really good. So um, you know, I used to try to take as much Adderall as, Adderall as I could. And I realized, wow, this is really not productive. Like taking too much, I don't get more work done. I get less. I have trouble sleeping. I don't feel good. I don't eat as much food. So I'm getting like too skinny. Uh, my sweat smells weird. It's really not a good thing. My girlfriend's like, I can tell you took Adderall today. You're all jittery and you smell bad. It's like, oh, maybe I don't want to take this. Um, so my general thought on prescription drugs, generally speaking, is, and of course, check with your medical doctor, not giving you medical advice. My opinion, perspective on them is the less you can take, the better to get the best outcome. And so if you can improve your mental performance with exercise and sleep and diet and take fewer prescription drugs, I think that's a good thing. I think that's more sustainable. Many prescription drugs do have negative side effects. So, so who wants who wants me to read this section on anorastam versus Adderall? Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me a roar. Let me know. Otherwise, I will skip to something else. I am looking down here at the bottom. All right, I got a roar from Phoenix. Fluoride-free water with salt and vitamin C. Delicious.
All right. So, so tell me, do you all want me to read the section on anorastam and Adderall or not? You're asking more questions. I don't know what it is that you would like to do. It's lagging a little bit, Phoenix. There's like a, a 10 second delay. All right, Teresa wants to hear it. Jackie, I'm sorry um, about your mom. That sounds very difficult. All right, I'm not hearing much protest. So I'm going to read it. So Anorastam versus Adderall. By the way, if you're just arriving, please put your name and where you're from in the chat. If you haven't written anything today, please drop something in the chat. Uh, please wake up the chat because if you don't respond, it's a lot more difficult for me to interact with you. Okay, so Adderall is a type of dextroamphetamine uh, and amphetamine used to treat ADHD. It's only available by prescription. The drug treats hyperactive symptoms such as restlessness. Interesting, it can also make you restless. It can also improve concentration. Um, Adderall has a stimulating effect. You might wonder if an anorastam works as well. That is a point worth considering. Adderall can be highly addictive and cause severe, severe side effects. They, these include anxiety, increased heart rate, weight loss, incontinence, and sexual dysfunction. One review of ADHD treatments published in adolescent psychiatry found that anoracetam can be helpful with unwanted side effects. I found that to be very true. So if someone's taking Adderall, Interesting. This is in the Journal of Adolescent Psychiatry. So they gave anoracetam to kids or adolescents. Taking anoracetam with Adderall reduced the negative side effects of Adderall. I also found it made it much more effective. So they gave kids 750 milligrams in the study. Oh, twice per day. So they gave them 1500, which is what they gave adults. However, it's important to note that researchers did not compare anoracetam and Adderall. The FDA has not approved anoracetam for ADHD treatment. Anoracetam side effects. So anoracetam is stimulating and can potentially cause jitteriness, irritability, insomnia, headaches, nausea, and vomiting. I think it's much, much less side effects than Adderall for sure. Yes, Jackie, please take care of yourself and improve your diet. That's really, really important. All right. Hi, Karina. Welcome. What article is this? This is on Healthline. So you research Anorastam on Healthline. I love Healthline. It's one of my favorite resources. Hi, Barbara from Indiana. Carabera, hi. What should you not take with Anorastam? Great question. So first, you want to take Anorastam in the early day, either in the morning or early afternoon. Don't take it in the evening unless you plan on staying up for six to, eight, six to eight hours. It could keep you awake. So that's number one. What else not to take it with? I would say alcohol, but it would probably improve your brain performance with alcohol. So it would probably make the alcohol less bad, though I don't know that. And I assumed alcohol with it, but I don't know that firsthand. I don't think that would be too hard. I mean, it's generally it's a good idea not to take pharmaceuticals with alcohol because it's it's kind of hard on your liver and kidneys. I don't know what to not take this with. It's always more about timing. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water. I think that's the important part. Shady Susan, Hyde Park. Hyde Park where? I'm in Hyde Park, Cincinnati. Where are you, where are you Shady Susan? We got Lindsay from Louisiana. We got Kimmy from Northern Virginia. Kim from Washington State. Yenny from Southern Cal. The internet is lagging in Vegas. Oh my. ADHD, TBI, and PTSD. Where can I find anoracetam? So Country Lad, there you have two options. One, you can search online, search by Anoracetam USA if you're in the United States. The other option is you can become a Patreon patron of mine. And I share, share that information where I buy my Anoracetam. I don't share that publicly with everyone because uh, the company would sell out and then I wouldn't be able to get it. So if you want to do that, you can become a Patreon patron for just three bucks a month. And that can save you a couple hours of research. Uh, you can become a Patreon patron if you go to robertlove.net or if you click the link below my profile. So I just changed, uh, just I just uh, changed my link to robertlove.net, so it's really easy to go to. Yeah, celery juice is great. Glowing autistic, I love it.
My parents have the best Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, well, that's where I am, Karina. I don't know why it's not working really well. Bye, Tiki Talk. It's spelled A-N-I-R-A-C-E-T-A-M. And my link is robertlove.net. We got Carla from Minneapolis. Avail Skin, have you heard of the use of red light on testicles to increase testosterone? I have heard that. I have not done it myself. Okay, so I've actually written a research paper on anorazepam. I want to give you some of the highlights of this. Who's drinking fluoride-free water out there? Who, who's doing that? By the way, I'm in, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio, and there was recently a, um, a spill. There was like a train wreck, and like a bunch of chemicals went into the Ohio River, which is a problem because a lot of Cincinnatians get water from the Ohio River. <coughs> and so I'm really glad my parents have a Berkey filter to filter out all of the, uh, filter out the, the heavy metals and the things that could be in the water. So that's what this is. This is Berkey filter. Who's gotten a fluoride filter? Really, really important. Thank you, the M cell. I'm sure I'll be, I'm sure I'll be okay. By the way, the way you test your Berkey filter is if you, um, you add, um, food coloring to it, you add food coloring to the top reverse osmosis filter. That's great. Karina. Reverse osmosis filter or Berkey filter will remove the fluoride. So if you had, um, if you have a Berkey filter and you add food coloring to the top, you can tell when the filter is working because it won't be in the bottom. How about using a distiller? You have a water, you have a, a way of making distilled water. Distilled water, I think, takes out everything but the H2O. So that can work as well. Yes, glowing autistic, I, I think I'll be fine. Do you need to use a Berkey filter on bottled water? Well, it depends if your bottled water is fluoride free or not. So you can look at that. Barbara bought a Berkey filter. Good for you. Great job. Yes, my mother's healing very well. Thank you. We just did, went to physical therapy on Friday. She has a great physical therapist who she really likes. She's doing her exercises. She's doing great. I'm trying now to work on her sleep, make sure she's getting enough sleep and that she's getting early morning sunshine. So every morning, as soon as I wake up, I'm drinking celery juice or water getting dressed and getting outside as soon as I can. And so that's a really, really good thing to do to help regulate sleep. My mother is not doing that yet. I want her to, to help improve her sleep cycle. Ooh, here we go. Okay, here's my paper on, here's some, some of my research on aniracetam. Studies show that aniracetam is helpful in treating attention issues, impaired REM sleep. Ooh, it improves REM sleep. I forgot about that. Motivation, bladder control, interestingly, fear and anxiety and depression. Aniracetam may also help stroke patients um, with cholinergic deficits. That means they don't have enough choline and help memory recovery after concussion. Aniracetam helps prevent memory loss associated with old age, brain lesions, and scopolamine. That was that article I just read you. Systematic administration of aniracetam increased dopamine and serotonin release. That's cool. Aniracetam increases BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and that's really good for memory and growing new brain cells. Aniracetam also has also shown promising results regarding vascular dementia. That is stroke. Six studies in humans found a benefit of aniracetam uh, in models of cerebral dysfunction. So that would be memory loss. Oh, here we go. The human clinical trials. Here we go. This is the good stuff. You ready? Get your pens out. A multi-center study from Italy. This is my favorite study. A multi-study center study from Italy on 109 patients with likely who likely had Alzheimer's disease found aniracetam improved both cognition and behavioral, behavioral measures in a six-month trial. In this randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, patients were assessed at baseline using a battery of established cognitive and behavioral tests. Participants were men and women between 65 and 80 years of age. Participants had all shown a progressive, gradual decline in cognition over the previous six months. CT scans were used at screening to remove patients with secondary dementia. So patients were evaluated at baseline and then two, four, and six months. Um, the placebo group showed steady deterioration over the course of six months. Uh, the anorastam group showed benefit after just 60 days and improvement was even greater at six months. So 
So I tried to write that in plain English. I'm sorry, that's my, my plain English when I'm writing a research paper. Here's the big deal. So they had people come into the laboratory. They had Alzheimer's disease or likely had Alzheimer's disease. And they gave them a memory test. And, um, and these people had shown memory loss over the last six months. So these people were getting worse. So they measured their memory and behavior at the beginning. Then they give half of them a placebo, half of them aniracetam. The placebo group continued to decline over six months, right? So memories here, goes down here. The anorastam group, their memory declined, but then at 60 days, it's the decline stopped. Then they started getting better. And these people had been declining over six months. So imagine this. Imagine you have a parent and you've seen them lose their memory over the last six months. And then they, they, they're into this study. They start taking anorastam. And after just 60 days, their memory loss stops. And then it starts improving. At six months, it's better than it was at the beginning. So these people's memory is better at the end of the study than at the beginning of the study. And these people had Alzheimer's disease. How cool is that? Yes, TikTok, I'm sorry for the lagging. You can check it out on Instagram or on YouTube. I am on all three. And the, the, um, the microphone and the video is actually quite better on YouTube. I got a really nice microphone over there. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why TikTok is not having good reception today. I'm in my parents' house and usually, usually we have great reception. All right. The M cells heading over to YouTube. Speaking of YouTube. Oh, so how many milligrams R Ramonita? So 750 to 1500 milligrams. Justin Roth. Hi, I started taking L-tyrosine because of you. Awesome. What can you tell me about acetyl L-carnitine? Um, it's good. I like acetyl L-carnitine. I would take L-tyrosine. I'd try that with, with lion's mane. Uh, that goes really well. It's a really great combination. What brand? What brand of what? Good night, Hamilton Party. Brand of aniracetam. Um, so I used to take Nootropics Depot. They don't, they don't sell it right now. Uh, so to find the best uh, aniracetam, search by aniracetam USA and then some information will come up. Yeah, it's spelled A-N-I-R-A-C-E-T-A-M, Aniracetam. Or if you become a if you become a Patreon patron of my channel, I share that with all my Patreon patrons. Many of them wanted to know. And so I shared that with them. Okay, other questions. Benefits of hugs. Yeah, great question, Karina. So hugs are like free drugs. They're free hormones. Uh, there's great, um, you know, some doctors will say minimum seven long hugs a day. Really, really good idea. The first day I consciously got seven hugs, I felt amazing. Anyone else gets seven like long hugs from people you like in the course of a day? It's so good. It's so very, very, very good. Like it feels so relaxing and comforting. It's it's free drugs. Like it's, it's hormones. And it increases, um, just thinking about it, it, produces a nice feeling. It increases, uh, likely increases serotonin, but it definitely increases oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone. And it's just terrific. And that reduces stress, it reduces anxiety, improves sleep, so good. Yeah, try to, try to get, so the deal is try to take two deep breaths with someone. That's how you know it's a long hug. And then you'll feel a nice relaxation. You'll feel like a relaxation in your arms and your body you'll feel the, the release of oxytocin. It's not just like quick casual hugs. It's actually like you're actually holding each other. It's really quite nice. What lion's mane does for women. So, so uh, Nathaniel, Natalie and Natalie Maya dot, the lion's mane for men and women, I believe does the same thing. It improves memory, it improves cognitive function, it reduces stress, it reduces anxiety, it improves sleep. My lion's mane is a blend of 10 medicinal mushrooms, and so it really reduces stress and anxiety and improves sleep. Who's, who's got my lion's mane? Who likes it? Um, so mine's not, not only lion's mane, but also cordyceps, reishi, shiitake, maitake, turkey tail, chaga, other mushrooms. It's awesome. It's so very, very good. So I definitely recommend, uh, I definitely recommend trying lion's mane if you hadn't. I, I, my favorite benefit is sleep. All right, Karina, let me know about the hugs. Jalen, come to bed. It's late, babe. You're talking to me? Well, that sounds like a very nice invitation. Thank you, Jalen. 
Yes, lion, thank you, Glowing Autistic. Lion's Mane is good for the gut health as well. What dosage? So I would follow directions on the bottle. Natalie Maya Dot. So follow. So mine is take two pills. It's, it's a relatively low dose of lion's mane. It's 266 milligrams. Some of them are as high as two grams, which is really a lot. But mine is different because it's got a blend of different ones. So it's not just lion's mane. It's a bunch of different mushrooms. And so you need a lower dose of all of them to get like the synergistic effect, which really makes a difference. Carrot Girl, wish I could retain all the knowledge you share. Then I forget all of it tomorrow. Oh, no. Why don't you try writing some down? This, by the way, this is a really important point. We experience and learn a lot of information throughout the day, especially as we have uh, access to the internet. And so it's a really good idea to write down what you learn and then review it the next day. By reviewing it, we are strengthening those neural connections and get good sleep. Good sleep is when we consolidate memory. So I highly, 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 how many highlies is that? Three. I highly, highly, highly recommend writing down the things that you learn and then reviewing them the next day, and that that's much more likely to stick in your brain. Bet even better, review it the end of the, at the end of the week. It's really likely to stick in your brain. Make sense? Supplements for schizophrenia, Krista. I'm not an expert in schizophrenia. <coughs> I do take lion's mane before bed. I love it. One soldier mom, how do you like it? Oh, nice. Thank you, Glowing Autistic. You're welcome, Natalie. If fish oil is great, I recommend 1,000 milligrams of EPA, 1,000 milligrams of DHA. Oh, great. Well, let me know how that lion's mane goes, Ab Abtomia. Are you taking mine or are you taking someone else's? Jamal, I take Royal Lion's Mane two hours before bed. I sleep better and I get vivid dreams. Totally, Jamal. I love the vivid dreams. They're so great. They're like fun adventures. Carrot Girl, you're the best. My mom diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Thank you for your knowledge. You are so welcome. I hope this is helpful to you. Any supplements to help control blood sugar? Um, yes. I, they're not going to be nearly as effective as diet. And so if you really want to control your blood sugar, by the way, who has some answers for Gene about how to control blood sugar? Who has recommendations either on Instagram or on TikTok or on YouTube? Who's got some thoughts on how Gene can control her blood sugar? Hi, the M cell. I see you are you are on YouTube now. Ooh, you share you share hugs and neck rubs with people at the assisted living home. That's awesome. I couldn't live without Roar and Omia. Yeah, those are great. Thank you, the M cell. I love those. All right, so really, no suggestions for Gene. Usually, there's like a ton of it. Lots of fiber. Excellent suggestion. No alcohol. Another good one. Al our body actually treats alcohol like sugar. So if you remember non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That is That did not exist before we started adding sugar to our, um, to our processed foods. It was just called uh, fatty liver disease from alcohol consumption. So reducing alcohol is a great idea. Stop eating sugar, exclamation point from Abtomia. Yes, great idea. So refined sugar very much spikes our insulin and glucose. By the way, spiking insulin, insulin's necessary to use glucose as energy, but it also stores glucose as fat. And so if you want to store less fat, it's a really good idea to reduce foods that spike glucose, like foods that are high in glucose or high in high fructose corn syrup. Walking after every meal. Yes, absolutely, sweet honeybee. Great suggestion. So post-meal walking, or if you want to get technical, postprandial, that's the word used in the research literature, postprandial walking for um, going for a walk for 10 minutes after a meal reduces post-meal glucose by 30%. The top diabetes drug, metformin, which I take for longevity, check with your doctor, you need a prescription. The, that drug only reduces post-meal glucose by 15%. So walking for 10 minutes is twice as effective as the leading pharmaceutical for lowering, lowering post-meal glucose. So if that doesn't, that's a great example of how behavior is so much more powerful than drugs. And so if you want, if you really want long-term benefit, Gene, I'd really recommend changing your diet, reducing the amount of sugar you eat, eating more fiber, eating more healthy vegetables, potentially eating more healthy fats, and um, going for walks after meals. These are great, great answers. Love lavender, increased protein, fat, and fiber. Great, great ideas. 
make sure it's healthy fat, healthy fiber or healthy, healthy protein for protein. I really like uh, the smash fish. That's salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. I make sure it's wild caught salmon and uh, Atlantic mackerel, not King mackerel. Those are healthy fatty fish. Other things you can take are grass fed beef, grass fed lamb, bison. Those are the red meats you can eat. Also pastured chicken. You're welcome, Gene. Did you get those down? Gene, tell us what's one thing you're going to do because of this. Tell us just one thing that's going to work for you. Kiko Smile, I don't know what you missed, but you can watch it all on YouTube. By the way, how's the experience on YouTube? I got a really, really nice camera. Oh, my laundry basket's in the background. I'll fix that later. But you get a nice view of, of, of Gaia, the painting behind me. Yes, reduce carbs as much as possible. Regular exercise for sure. Exercise uses glucose in our muscles. And then when we eat, our muscles suck up the glucose. And so that drops the glu that dro drops your, your blood glucose. Andrea, it's a lovely view. Oh, wonderful. Love that. Is there a daily supplement you recommend instead of a multivitamin? Yes, I like this. I like Morning Man. Morning Man, this is a sponsor of the show. This is a multivitamin. This has uh, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, B6, folate. But it come, but it's 50 different superfoods. So it's a, it's a meal replacement and it's a multivitamin. You can get that at robertlove.net. Scroll down to products for optimal health and then click on that. And then you get a great discount when you subscribe. I, I, I drink morning man every morning it's fantastic i recommend the caffeine free if you have kids all right gene so tell me what 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 gene you're gonna eat more fiber excellent please let me know how it goes jan or jan lion's main question mark can you tell me more about that trace Teresa or Teresa, did i do that painting no the painting behind me is done by min jay lee who i believe is the um I think he's the world's greatest living artist. Like if I were to choose one human, granted, I haven't seen every every artist. I haven't seen most of them. The artists that I've seen, this is my favorite living artist. Let me, let me bring the painting just a little bit closer. This is a copy. This is not the not the original. My friend owns the original. Isn't this beautiful? This is done by hand with razor sharp markers on very, very thin paper. This is called Gaia, which is the Greek goddess of Mother Earth. You can just see the amazing detail. Look at the third eye. The third eye is just fantastic. A human drew that. Isn't that amazing? I love the eyes. The eyes are just so rich. So that's Gaia by Minjay Lee. Oh, awesome. User 175. You're going to love it. Mac attack. Lion's main ship so quick. I'm so glad. Yeah, we got the emails down. Thank you for your patience. We were having some technical difficulties, but now the emails are going out very quickly. So you, you very quickly get your tracking. Yes, Minjay Lee. M-I-N-J-A-E Lee. Terrific. Uh, Laura, yes, you can definitely take lion's mane with fish oil. Really good idea. If you want neurogenesis, which is the growth of new brain cells, it's a really good idea to take lion's mane and fish oil together along with a B-complex vitamin. Why? Well, the B-complex vitamin provides um, raw materials to make certain neurotransmitters. So that's a really good idea. Not just a B12, but a whole B-complex vitamin. You want all the B vitamins. Number two, the fish oil provides healthy fat for your brain. Your brain outside of... Um, outside of water is primarily fat. And so to repair your brain and grow new brain cells, you need healthy fat. Dave Asprey, founder of Bulletproof Coffee, asks an important question. Do you want a fish oil brain or do you want a French fry brain? I want a fish oil brain. I want my brain cells made of fish oil and not French fries. And so um, eating healthy fats is a really good thing to do if you want to repair your brain and potentially grow new brain cells. And then lion's mane 
and exercise both increase BDNF, which stands for brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which helps grow new brain cells. And so that's a combination of three that's really good. B-complex, fish oil, and lion's mane. Really good to take all three together. If you and then learn something. So not just don't just take them and watch television unless you're like, you know, you're watching a documentary or you're taking notes on something. Um, those can all be really helpful when taken together. Oh my, we got a bunch of questions on YouTube now, now that the Umsell and Justin Roth are here. Oh my. <laughs> great, great comment by Andrea. Hi, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. That's great. Berberine. Yeah, berberine's pretty cool too. It's much better over here on YouTube. Well, thank you, the M cell. I have not, I've not taken these um, testosterone increasers. So if you want, a lot of people, are, it's, it's, I'm guessing mostly men ask how to increase testosterone. And women, this is important for you too. A decrease in testosterone for women uh, reduces energy, reduces sex drive and vitality, reduces leadership, um, and impairs mental function. A lot of women are, are low in testosterone. And most women don't know this. Women actually have more testosterone in their bodies than estrogen. Uh, men have much more, but women have more testosterone than estrogen. They're just measured in different ways. And so testosterone is very important for women as well. So some ways to naturally, naturally increase your testosterone. Number one is sleep. Sleep is so, so important for testosterone. Number two is exercise, specifically uh, strength training. So lift something that helps increase testosterone. Number three is to eat protein. Eating protein can help increase testosterone as well. I recommend those three things to increase testosterone in both men and women. Denise, who is she? Hindu? You, you, mean, you mean Gaia? Um, Gaia is a Greek goddess. Minje Lee is from South Korea and Minje is a man. I thought Minje was a woman at first, uh, but Min, Min, Minje is, is a man from South Korea. I think he's about 33, 34. He's pretty young. Your product that has lion's mane. Yes, yes, Jan. My product that has lion's mane is called Roar Lion's Mane. You can get it at RoarLionsMane.com or you can go to RobertLove.net and you'll see a link there as well. You're welcome, Laura. So glad to help. You're welcome, Justin. Is taking magnesium oxide a waste of money? Magnesium oxide is a low quality form of magnesium that can cause disaster pants. So um, that's not good. Magnesium glycinate is a better form of magnesium that's more bioavailable and it's only slightly more expensive. So I'd recommend taking that. Gosh, I like that water, that fluoride free water with the salt, so good. How can a woman tell if she's low in testosterone? So number one is brain fog. And number two would be low energy. That would indicate it. By the way, here, let me show this to you. This is, I learned this from Amy Cuddy, who's a professor at Harvard Business School. She's got a great TED Talk on body language. Also has a great book called Presence. Who knows Amy Cuddy, a professor at Harvard, a great TED Talk, um, has millions of views, really great. So I recommend her book, Presence. And here's what she talks about. She talks about something called power poses. These are ways of standing or body postures that actually raise testosterone and lower cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone and high levels of cortisol um, indicate high levels of stress. And leaders have low levels of cortisol and high levels of testosterone. And standing in this pose for only two minutes will increase testosterone and decrease uh, cortisol. And one way they knew it decreased cortisol and increased testosterone was that after standing in the certain way, yeah, exactly, country lad, superhero pose. After standing in this way, uh, people were, were more likely to gamble. Isn't that interesting? So, so being willing to gamble indicates an increase in confidence and an increase in testosterone. So here, here, here are two power poses. Let me show you. So this is one the superwoman pose, hands on hips, stand like this for two minutes, and you'll actually feel a difference in your body. At about, I feel it about two minutes and 20 seconds. So this is a very strong, confident posture. Another one is this, like, yay, I just won, I just, I just won, yes! This is a really strong one, so you can stand there for two minutes as well. We're not gonna do that 
for the live, but practice at home. I do that before and after exercising. So I'll, I'll stand in that posture for two minutes at the beginning of my workout and then at the end of my workout to increase testosterone and improve performance. Thank you, Karina. I'm glad I look like a superhero. Sometimes I feel like a superhero. DMUXX, why shouldn't kids take melatonin? Great question. Melatonin is a hormone. We don't know what happens when we give hormones to kids. The research has shown it looks like it's safe. Andrew Huberman mentioned that um, it's a bad idea to give kids melatonin. I agree. And just we just don't know what happens when we do it for, for a while. If you do it, you know, once a month, is it going to destroy your kids' hormones? Probably not. And I, I don't recommend it for kids. Denise, I love your lines, man. It works so well. My doctor is taking me off my anxiety. Really? That's wonderful. Congratulations. Big roar to Denise. That's wonderful. I'm so glad. I, I hope my lion's mane is, is helpful in that process. I love that you're going off your anxiety meds. It's great. Congratulations. I love hearing that. It's awesome. Karina, the name of the book is Presence by Amy Cuddy. Presence. Ashley Timmons, I just bought magnesium from Walmart. They are magnesium oxide. Did I just waste my money? I'm going to take them back. They definitely have a they have a return policy. All right. If you're just arriving, please put your first name and where you are from in the chat. And then uh, we've been talking about aniracetam and how aniracetam can help improve memory after concussion, can improve memory after um, anesthesia and even improve memory in those with early stage Alzheimer's. Oh, abtomlia, abtomla, magnesium oxide, no bueno. Yes, love the no bueno phrase, totally. What if we have uric acid and cholesterol? Can we have protein? Um, Mohammed, that's a good question. That's a, that's a good question for your medical doctor because I don't know what your cholesterol and uric acid levels are. One way to reduce uric acid is um, black seed oil. So you might talk to your doctor about black seed oil. Black seed oil is very cool. It reduces, um, it reduces inflammation. Uh, redu it reduces specifically two markers of inflammation, um, IL-6 and um, interleukin-6 and I think C-reactive protein. It also increases antioxidants in the body, specifically superoxide dismutase. I love the name of that. Lo love the sound of that. Superoxide dismutase. So it reduces inflammation, increases antioxidants, and it helps burn fat. In double-blind placebo-controlled studies, those who take black seed oil lose more weight than those who take the placebo. And one way this happens is that black seed oil reduces uric acid. Uric acid promotes fat storage, specifically visceral fat, the dangerous fat around your belly that's actually fat around your organs. And so if you have high levels of uric acid, you may want to talk to your doctor or pharmacist about black seed oil. Yeah, Karina, um, it's it's a dangerous game to give kids hormones. And I, 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 I could be wrong. It might be perfectly safe. Um, but I, I would be very wary about giving kids melatonin. As soon as I, I saw that interview with Dr. Andrew Huberman, I immediately called my sister. I said, hey, I and I, I actually called like three, three different mothers. I was like, hey, I highly recommend you not give your kids um, melatonin. Um, Paige, I'm not sure where, where you can get aniracetam in, um, in Australia. I would talk to a medical doctor and see what they can find, especially if your husband has, has brain injury. I'm sorry to hear about your husband. That sounds really difficult. Ab abtomia, I do not, ab is that abtomia or abtomla? Um, I do not have a good company for black seed oil. Look for third party tested. That's a really good uh, indicator of high quality. Can teenagers take melatonin? Same, same answer. We don't know, or I don't know. Um, again, it's giving teenagers hormones. So the question is, do you want to give your teenager hormones? Thank you, Paige. 
Pam from Ohio. Hi, Pam. I hope you're um, making sure you're filtering your water. I'm in Ohio as well. And uh, that that toxic water is just getting to Cincinnati, I think. So it's a really good idea to filter your water. Okay, YouTube has its own conversation. That's delightful. All right, so let me tell you all about some of the free stuff that I put together for you. So if you go to robertlove.net, I just put this together. Um, go to robertlove.net and that'll take you to all of the links um, that, I've, that I've put together for you and all the free stuff. Who likes free stuff? Give me a roar. Give me a thumbs up. So let me go here. Where are we? Okay. That's not right. Let me update that. So first is my Roar Lion's Mane. So if you want to get, so my Lion's Mane is the best quality Lion's Mane at the best possible price. Um, it's a mixture of 10 different medicinal mushrooms. Some things you want to look for in a great Lion's Mane supplement are third party tested. Uh, that means an independent company has tested the supplement to make sure what's in the supplement is actually on the label. It's an important standard in quality and safety. So you want to look for that in whatever supplement you get. Number two, GMP certified. That means good manufacturing practices. That means um, this, the supplement manufacturing company, the, 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 the producer, um, is doing things the right way. And lastly, number three, uh, you want to have a money back guarantee. That means if you don't like it or it doesn't work for you, you can, you can get your money back. Someone just mentioned she just bought magnesium oxide from Walmart. So hopefully you can bring that back and get your money back because magnesium oxide is not a high quality of magnesium. So next, um, it, if you want to lose weight and keep it off, I have some free resources from you. Approximately 40% of Americans are obese. <coughs> Excuse me. 70% are overweight, 7 out of 10. One of the best ways to reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease and um, and chronic disease like, like heart, heart attack, diabetes, is to lose weight weight. So I have two great resources for you. Number one, I wrote a I wrote an ebook with Chad Tackett, one of the world's leading experts in sustainable weight loss. You can download that ebook for free. That's the top 10 supplements for weight loss. One of them is Lion's Mane because Lion's Mane helps um, helps improve sleep. Sleep is important for weight loss. Another one is black seed oil. Black seed oil, as I mentioned, helps reduce uric acid. And in double blind placebo controlled studies, people who take black seed oil lose more weight. So you can learn about those supplements for free. Just click there, enter your name and email, and we will email you that book plus our recipe book. We wrote a recipe book um, that has, has, has fat burning recipes. Now you can't just eat these recipes and you lose weight. You get, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole diet, but these are, these are healthy recipes. They're delicious. So you get two eBooks for free after that on the next page, um, you will get access to a free hormonal profile. Your hormones affect your ability to lose weight. Who understands that? Like you, how you, how your hormones are, that affects your ability to lose weight and your hormones are different from the next person. And it's important to understand your unique hormonal profile to understand what you need to do to lose the weight and keep it off. And so you, you can get that um, assessed for free with the free hormonal profile. Just fill out your information and Chad will send that to you. Next are some free resources. First is the brain fitness newsletter. This is my free email newsletter that comes every day. It's got a bunch of free information about how to improve your brain health, how to improve your fitness, how to improve your overall health, healthy foods, healthy supplements, really cool stuff. Who's, who, gets, who gets the newsletter? Who likes the newsletter? If you want to say something nice about the newsletter, that'd be great. If you don't like the newsletter, you can say that as well. Um, but that's a free resource I put together for you. Just click the link, enter your name and email, and you will be subscribed to that. Next is a free report I wrote, the top 10 supplements for brain health. More free stuff. So if you would like to learn uh, some of my favorite supplements for brain health, click there, enter your name and email, and I will send that to you. I also have a free masterclass on how to prevent Alzheimer's disease. It is 45 minutes of, uh, of, of science-based information that you can use to help reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease. Next, my Newsweek article. I was recently featured in an article in Newsweek on how to prevent Alzheimer's disease. If you'd like to read that article, you can click there. Next is the cruise application. I'm going, to, I'm going to do a video on this, so that way people who are not in the Lions then can learn about this, but we're putting together a cruise, or I am putting together a cruise. If you want to come, that would be great. Uh, and what I want to know is how long you want to be at sea, where you want to go, and how much money you want to spend, because I want to find a cruise that fits what it is that you want. So if you want to come on the cruise, we are going, so basically we'll meet in person. So basically we'll meet in person on the cruise. That'll be cool. And then I will rent space so that I can um, do, um, 
you know, trainings, teachings. So I'll, I'll be up on stage answering your questions and teaching you cool stuff while we're on the cruise. So you'll be learning. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll visit the ports together and we'll also uh, have dinner together. So that's the cruise. Next, excuse me. Next, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, this whole broadcast is available on YouTube, as are the past broadcasts. Um, and then Instagram is the best place to send me a personal message. I respond to most of those. So Jackie, you just put your email in the chat. Um, if you want the newsletter, you need to click the newsletter link and enter your email there. That's the best way to get the newsletter, if that's what you're wanting. And if you don't know where to go, go to robertlove.net, and then you'll see a bunch of different links there and scroll down to free resources. Okay. Next, there's a masterclass with Dr. Linnell King on long haul virus. Long haul virus is the virus that is not to be named, and you can get information there. Uh, next, if you'd like to work with me directly, you can book a personal consultation or schedule a free FDA certified memory test. Last uh, are the physical products. These do cost money. So first we mentioned my lion's mane. Uh, this is the best quality lion's mane at the best possible price. If you find a better lion's mane at a better price, I will pay you $100. Flat out, pay you $100. So, and, and I have a six-month money-back guarantee. Some people have, have asked for their money back. By the way, most of these people ordered too much. Or one person, um, she was allergic to some of the mushrooms. She didn't know about that, so I, I refunded her. Um, and, and so I want you to know there is a money-back guarantee. A few people have asked for their money back for for one of those two reasons, pretty much everyone's gotten good results that I, that I've heard of. Um, and if you don't, I'm happy to refund your money if you want to try it. Uh, next is the lion's mane coffee replacement.